Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we're going to be ranking our favorite felds, our top 10 favorite felds. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Yeah, we've been talking about Feld a lot, I guess, recently, just <laughs> because we went through our top 50, and when you're that good, you show up on our top 50 list a lot. Yes. But yeah, we Savan Feld is probably one of our favorite designers, and uh, um, or at least our, most, you know, our favorite most consistently. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to go through and rank our top 10. Um, this is not conclusive by any means, because there's some you know harder to find ones that I think I'd really like, but they're just hard to find or expensive right now and there's some brand new ones that are still coming out so tuscany much uh yeah i'm pretty excited about that <laughs> so is everybody we don't know any idea what it's about but we're going to buy it exactly. just like everybody else that's out there exactly so yeah this might change over time but uh, this is as of right now our top 10 failed games uh there's a lot of crossover um so we're just gonna say what we like about it individually just in, in yeah rather than do that whole like Further up on my list. But speaking of whatever. crossover, our very first one is the same. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, so our number <laughs> 10 <laughs> are both in the Year of the Dragon. All right, so in the Year of the Dragon, uh, you're just going through this really chaotic year. Sound familiar, anybody? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> each month, some new calamity has happened. Sound familiar, anybody? It's not all calamity. Sometimes you're doing fireworks. Sorry, sometimes you're doing fireworks. Yeah. But anyways, the point is, there's... Every month there's some new thing that's happening that you have to prepare for. And um, you have to collect certain resources or, uh, you know, you pay the quantities, you might lose some people. You have to pay some money. You have to pay some food. Uh, you have to have doctors and medicine, that kind of thing. Every month is different and you have to have, kind of prepare along the way for each one. Yeah, I really like that. But I like how it's all there. And it can be kind of punishing. You can plan ahead, but sometimes people can cut you off over and over again and you just can't get what you want. But... Even though it can be punishing, it doesn't last very long. It's a pretty fast, fast game. So even if you feel like this just isn't happening and all my people are dying, game's over. Yeah, uh, the turn order is really important. There's kind of a struggle for turn order, order yes. the whole time. And that's really, uh, really fun and really challenging and, and really rewarding. So, no, yeah, we like In the Year of the Dragon. My number nine is Luna. And I think the thing that I like the most about Luna is just... It's aesthetically pleasing to me. I like how there's this big island in the middle and then all of these little actual pieces of island that you just lay out on the table and how they move and how you move back and forth from these different places. And even the standees, how they move. It's like one moves X amount of spaces this way, the other moves X amount of spaces this way, and it just kind of goes like that. And I just like what it looks like when it's all laid out. All right, so my number nine is Merlin for a similar reason. I just like the aesthetic of it. It's kind of a circular, circular board. There's an inner ring and an outer ring, especially if you're using that expansion. Um, but there is, which I'm not going to talk about quite yet, uh, but there is uh, you know, these six sections of the board. Each one has a different color assigned to it, different flags that you're sending, you're able to collect, different uh, different tokens that you're adding in, these influence little markers. Um, man, it's, it's a roll and move game, but it's not a roll and move game in the sense of like, you know, like Monopoly or something like that. There's a lot more choices than that. You roll a four dice, you have to choose one of them, um, which one you're going to use at which timing, and it matters where you land and how you plan ahead. And you can move clockwise, and your Merlin figure can move counterclockwise or clockwise. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot of, a little more frantic, a little more chaotic yeah. than some of these other ones as far yeah. as, you know, being able to, to react to other people. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, Merlin it looks great on the table, and it is, it is fun. My number eight is Amerigo, and I think this game just has a really neat um, action mechanism. It has this cube tower, and so you're putting cubes into this tower, but they all don't come out at the same time. So what colors come out and the amount of those colors that come out dictate what your turn is and how strong that action is. So I really like that because you can kind of, you kind of know what's in the cube tower, but you don't know exactly what's going to come out. So you can hope for something, be surprised for something. Know that this should be the general idea that you're working for. And I just really like how that action selection works. All right, so my number eight is La Isla. This is one of the lighter felt games, but that doesn't mean it's lacking in in fun or decision making. Yeah, uh, you have this island of uh, these previously animals that were thought to be previously extinct. But here they are, alive and well on this island. Yeah. Um, and on that island, uh, you're trying to collect them. You're trying to surround these animals to collect them. Um, but you have these different action cards that give you benefits every time you do a certain action. You only have three slots at a time. So what you're doing is you are having to play one each turn. And eventually, you're going to have to start covering some of them up. Um, so you want to kind of 
tailor what cards you have facing up, you know, facing up, uh, based off the timing of when you need them to be up. And so you can get some really nice synergies um, and some extra depth out of the, at each one of your turns. So I, I really enjoy La Isla. Or La Isla. I've seen it pronounced other ways. I don't know. You've heard it pronounced heard other ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the whole, you know, five senses thing. I've tasted it spelled, spelled this way. I don't know. My number seven um, is Merlin. And Ryan mentioned this as his number nine. And it's just, it's fun. I, I did it. It's also aesthetically pleasing as well. And I like um, mitigated dice rolls like I like that the pip decides where you move it but there's just so much choice in that and then the um which pip die you're going to take first will determine the other things that you do and I really like that and then I'm really bad at um the extra like map thing what is that thing Oh, the environs? Yes. Where there's like, the, you put your little castle things? Yeah, so like, manner. there's like a whole separate little board that I always forget about, and I just like, and you need it. There's good things in there, but I forget. I see this whole circle, and I'm focusing on that, and, and my own player thing, and I'm like, oh yeah, there's this extra little board that's a part of the game that I completely forget about, but it's still fun. All right, so my number seven, Bethany, you mentioned Amerigo. Man, that cube tower is just so impressive, and it's so much fun, actually. It's just a really interesting way to have that action selection. Yeah. Um, but on top of that, uh, there's just you know, movement all around these islands on this board, and it's this really big board we got the four-player count. Um, and you're using these polyomino-style tiles, as these buildings that you're kind of populating these islands with, um, and you have to really plan ahead and um, yeah, move these boats around. I just really enjoyed the heck out of Amerigo. My number six is Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Notre something. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the what I like about this game is the card drafting. We all have the exact same action cards, but we are shuffling our individual decks and we're drawing um, three and then we are passing those and playing those. But the thing that's fun about that is that you can hope that you're going to play something but you really need to play something else so you pass things and you're hoping that maybe somebody else is going to pass it to you but then it doesn't happen or you could potentially take the same action twice because of what you play and how something is passed for you and i just really like the um the thinking that goes behind what cards you're going to draft and what cards you're going to play and i just really like that all right so my number six is aquasphere um man there is just so much depth there so much crunchiness you have so much to do and so very little time and so many so little actions to do it with you have to program these little robots and then once you have them programmed then you have to fire that action off and you are there's just so much you need to do between collecting gems and fighting off these octopods yeah all the all the programming there's kicking other people out of the little programming yeah. tube and oh, getting the submarines and there's just points coming at you it feels like from all over the place, but at the same time, yeah. there's not a lot of points. It's just yeah. from a wide variety of places. Oh, gosh. Every time I feel this, if I play this game, I just feel so constrained and so, um, I don't know, so satisfying, too, to, like, yeah. you know, navigate those waters. And navigate it, those waters, aquasphere. Yeah, yeah, no, aqua. <laughs> navigate that aqua. Agua. I don't know. This is weird. <laughs> no, but I, yeah. Aquasphere is really tight. It's really fun. My number five is Trajan. And I just feel like this is like classic Feld. If you want to get a taste for all the different types of things that Feld does, I think Trajan is a great way to do that, to kind of just experiment with, with what he does. And I really like how in this game, I feel like you can do, you and your opponents can do different things and still have a chance to win at the end. It's not one of those things to where everybody has to do this one thing and kind of ignore the others or has to do a little bit of everything. You guys can kind of have your own different things and still um, be in competition, and I really like that. All right, so my number five is Carpe Diem. Um, this is a tiling game, which you're drafting these tiles out of this kind of the circle. Uh, and uh, when you place them, you, what you're trying to do is each building, when you complete that building, uh, you get certain benefits. Each building has its own style of benefit. Um, and on top of that, uh, all those different resources that you're collecting, you have to save those up because at the end of each round, there's going to be kind of a scoring section. It's kind of a part of the board where it's all about scoring. And if you didn't collect enough, you know, whatever, fish or something, yeah, you're not okay, going to yeah. be able to score that well. Um, so you, uh, yeah, it's just really kind of tug and pull of, place the tiles where you need them to be, but also complete the buildings, but also kind of hold out for completing off a big building, uh, and all of those different decisions that go into this tile lane game. Um, it is a, it's for a tile lane game, very heavy, yeah. uh, and um, yeah, very fun. My number four... I think I've wrapped up every single one of my 
And it was fun. I know. I've been doing, <laughs> I've been doing that too, though. I like. I liked it. I liked it. It was good. I was liked fun. it. I liked it. I liked this next one. I'm going to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I, we have to say it more emphatically. I know. I really liked it. I liked it. As we go I really on. liked it. I liked it. Anyway, so I'm going to edit four, out all of this. Aww. My number four <laughs> is Aquasphere, and um, Brian had mentioned this earlier. It was what was it? It was his six. I don't have anything more to add on that. I think it's a really fun game. I enjoy having to plan ahead because you're only going to get so many actions when you're planning these robots. You can't take every action in a turn either. So there's only so many and how you move the um, robots, how you're programming in, you literally cannot take all the actions. And so I really like that. I also like how they added the thematic element of you can't earn more points if you haven't gotten the funding. Mm -hmm. So you have to have those little gems in order to even get more points. And I just really like that little, you can't ignore that. Because obviously if you're researching, the people want to know that you're providing something worse. Some results, yeah. yeah. So I just really like that little little twist on scoring. My number four is Bora Bora. Um, this is another one where there's just so much to do and so little time to do it. You have to recruit the help of these men and women tiles that you're acquiring um, in order to kind of help give you extra actions. But it's it's dice placement as your as your actions. So the higher the, the dice value, the more you get of that certain action. However, the higher the dice value, the less likely it is to be able to place it where you want to place it. So it's it's got this really nice kind of tug and pull of of all that. And I like how Feld tends to do that. Is high dice are not necessarily better than low dice. Yeah, yeah. And you know, in this case, they are better, but they're harder to place. So there's a trade off. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's it, it looks great on the table. There's just it's just so much vibrant colors. It kind of looks like this Polynesian island kind of a setting with all these different little huts, and different fish all over the place. Uh, it's beautiful, uh, and it is enjoyable. <laughs> uh, let me use my thesaurus. <laughs> my number three was Ryan's five, and Who that cares? is I do, and that is Car ooh. Well, it doesn't matter. I know what the other ones are. It, it <laughs> is Carpe Diem. And it, all the same things that Ryan said about this tile drafting game. Um, the two things that I would add is just your own player board, like Ryan mentioned. You each have different ways that you can score extra points. And so there is that tug and pull, like Ryan was mentioning, about you want different tiles and you want to complete those buildings that you're building. But you also need things in order so you don't get negative points over here. So I really like that. And then I also like um, when you play two-player when you're moving across drafting these tiles whenever there's two tiles left they're gone so i like that it still brings that tension um to a two-player game that you would get at a higher player count all right so my number three is trajan like bethany mentioned this is the quintessential feld game it feels like um yeah. the most classic the most uh i don't know the, the best example of all the things he likes to do, yeah. like what we call like your feed your people mechanic, it has that. It has these different like the, you know the demands of the people that you have to meet, or else you're gonna lose points at the end of each round. Yeah. It has a really fun action selection mechanism. In this case, it's a mancala. Um, it's got different areas of the board and kind of got that point salad thing going for it. Uh, everything that he does so well, this does so well. Trajan is. Felled at his best. This is just such a great game, and um, I never ever get tired of it. So our number twos sync up. This is a game that we believe if you only want to own one Feld game, this is the game that you should own. This is own. the one. Yes. And it is Castles of Burgundy. Yeah. Castles of Burgundy, the card game. Oh, dear Lord, no. <laughs> <Gosh>. <laughs> Castles of Burgundy, oh. uh, the uh, superior version of... The, the original. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. So cool. It's It's... You're drafting, again, a, a community of tiles, drafting them, putting them on your personal player board. It's got, a, again, a two-step thing. You have to first get it off the board and then put it onto your personal board. Yeah. Um, and everything you do does something different for you. So the boats help you go further in the turn order. <laughs> there is some buildings that like give you extra actions in some way. There's mines that give you money. There's these kind of knowledge tiles or science tiles that kind of help you break some rules in your favor or get you some extra victory points at the end of the game. Um, everything you do um, results in points. So yeah. it's more about uh, everybody's going to have high, high points usually, um, and it's all about finding that right path 
to get to your strategy fulfilled. This is also a really great example about how you can use dice whereas the where the pips higher or lower aren't better or worse than because you may want it to and you're upset that you rolled two sixes because you don't want to use those things. And so I really like how the it's the pips that are important, not necessarily the like how high they exactly, are. Exactly, exactly. That they all have benefits to them and no one is better than the other. So I really like that. And I, there's like the dice mitigation too. You can yeah, actually you change, can change the dice values you the dice if you, value. re, you know, save this, these worker tiles. And there's also just a ton of expansions for this game. They're all like really little expansions, but there's like a ton of we have them. like 10 of them and it's still like, okay, you get 20 tiles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's really fun. There's this, uh, there was this um, team version of this, which is really fun to play and it was just how you can take the same system and just kind of expand on it like that. Yeah, um, so there is the 10th anniversary edition, which supposedly brightens the colors up quite a bit. Still not like a lot, but um, I, it a lot, apparently has a lot of the expansions in it too. So um, I'm, I want that. <laughs> Father's Day's coming up. I'm just saying. <laughs> You're on the clock. You had a week. You're not even wearing I a know. watch. <laughs> when, even if it was, it wouldn't tell me like how far away Father's Day is. This is a countdown. <laughs> yeah. yeah, freckle the hair countdown. Next to Castle Burgundy. Solid. Yeah. Solid. Unbelievable. My number one, um, Ryan mentioned earlier, and it was eight. <laughs> you made that up. You have no idea. <laughs> no, it was eight right there. And it is La Isla, La Isla. Anyway, this is really fun. I really love it. Um... You said it was out of print now? I think so. One of the things that was great about this game was that the components weren't wonderful, but it gave it a huge, it, it made the barrier to, to entry really easy. It was like a $25 game. And that was, yeah, you can yeah. still find it much cheaper than that now. Yeah, and I just felt like you got so much game for that. And Ryan had mentioned the cards. And the reason why that's really fun for me, first of all, I really like multi-use cards. But you are limited. So you only have X amount of slots. And you have to draft a card to put in one of these slots. So you could have a synergy going that helps you work with um, the actions on the on the island or how to get bonus points or how you're scoring scoring the set collection of the animals that you're discovering, but you have to cover it up because every single turn that you draft, you have to cover something up eventually when they're all full. And so I just really like that. It doesn't, you can get a synergy going, but it's not going to last forever. All right. So my number one uh, is Luna. Out of all the games on these lists, this is the only one with, um, Perfect information, meaning there is nothing hidden in this game. Everything that from the very beginning of the game to the, the end of the sixth round is pl planned out ahead of time. You know where certain things are going to be. You can you can at least kind of predict or have an idea of what everyone is planning on doing from the very beginning of the game. And it's all about uh, reacting to that, kind of planning ahead, making those wise choices. Um, there are no hidden cards in this game. There are no dice um, that are going to give you a random result. It's all it's all right there. And so mapping out where you want to be and where when you want to be there uh, is just so important. Um, each one of these islands around this major you know middle island does a different thing. And um, there's these different standees that are representing the moon priestess and the architect builder guy. Um, and you have to have to. Isn't there a bad guy too? Yeah, the apostate. So you want to be where he isn't, but sometimes you might need to be because that's also where the builder is. And so mm -hmm. then you got to build your building and then quick get out of there or take the penalty. But no matter what, it's so much fun. I just love Luna. Thank you so much for watching our top 10 felt list. Hopefully as he continues to come up with new games, we can update this list as the years go on. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. You can also find us on Facebook under Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. You can find us on Instagram under Ryan and Bethany. And then you can also find us on Twitter under Ryan and Bethany One. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining in. We will see you next time. Okay. Bye.